Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to Macabre Matt May with Craig and Sean. Um, it's been a little while since we re- since we <laughs> recorded last. It's true, but it's true. Uh, you know, life is what life is, and we're back uh, once again, episode twenty-eight, to uh, hopefully enthrall you with <laughs> our takes on a horror movie. Absolutely. So, yeah, this week we are going to discuss uh, Freaky. So if you have not seen Freaky, now is your chance to pause us, go watch the movie, come back and listen to what we have to say about it. And if you need to know where to watch it, you can watch it on HBO Max. Uh, this movie was released in 2020. It was written by Michael Kennedy and Christopher Landon, directed by Christopher Landon, Stars none other than Vince Vaughn is the Butcher, Catherine Newton is Millie, Celeste O'Connor is Nyla, and Misha Ashovrich is Josh. So, uh, when you're thinking about this movie before you get started in it, you're wanting to know what is this movie, this is basically Freaky Friday with a comedy horror twist. And, uh, you end up with uh, this movie. So the movie opens with four kids discussing the local urban legend of the Blissfield Butcher. Of course, they all scuff it off as, uh, you know, just an average run-of-the-mill urban legend. Unfortunately for them, but happily enough for us, (laughs) the four kids are soon killed off by the Butcher, who wears a Jason-esque type mask, um... Well, not a hockey mask, it certainly resembles it enough to make you think of Jason. Oh, yeah. That's one of the uh, the many homages we get throughout this film. Yeah. Um, as he kills them, he is drawn to an ancient dagger called the Lidolum, which is in the house, and he decides to take it. Uh, the next day, we are introduced to Millie, Nyla, and Josh, three who kids who wouldn't be outcast anywhere ever in the world except for in this movie. Um, (laughs) Millie is the school mascot and that night is the homecoming football game. Millie's mom gets drunk and passes out, leaving Millie at the school by herself while there is a serial killer in town because, you know, that's what you should do. Naturally. And so the butcher shows up and hunts down Millie, eventually catching her. As he stabs her in the shoulder with the Dola dagger, weirdly enough, he sustains an identical wound, and there is a Aztec pyramid that just shows up, but just don't think too much about it. (laughs) So, (laughs) the next morning when the butcher wakes up, uh, he happens to wake up in Millie's body, seeing the potential to be free of what he once was and to have a fresh start on killing a new group of kids without any interference from police or, you know, anybody that might be on to him. He embraces the idea and heads to school where he impersonates a now quote-unquote hot Millie. Um, we know she's hot because he steals Millie's sister's leather jacket um, pulls her hair into a ponytail and when he gets to school all the guys are now checking her out whereas before they ignored her so millie on the other hand wakes up in the body of the butcher who you know basically lives as a homeless man or an unsheltered person right Uh, she soon figures out uh, what is going on and the cops are after her as the butcher because she was able to give a description to the cops the night before, which really was, you know, bad luck on her part. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, she gives a description of what is going to be herself, so they can chase her around. So now trapped in his body with nowhere to go, she heads to school to convince Nyla and Josh, her two best friends, that it is her. And after a pretty funny chase scene uh, between Millie as the butcher and Nyla and Josh, she is able to convince them. Uh, Eventually, they figure out what happened and hatch a plan to catch the butcher and transfer their bodies back. However, they still have a few very real problems. The butcher, number one, doesn't want to get its old body back. He wants to stay Millie. Number two, they only have 24 hours to change back to Millie 
or she is stuck in the butcher's body forever. Three, the Ladola is at the police station. Four, everyone thinks Millie is the butcher, so she has to wear a mask everywhere. Five, the butcher is killing a bunch of people while in Millie's body. He's a lot, a lot of things to overcome. So I mean, it's just stacked against him. <laughs> it is. It, and eventually they overcome it all, and Millie is able to stab the butcher with a knife, switching them back. And just as she does, the police show up and shoot the butcher. Lucky for her that they switch back immediately instead of the next day, um, like they did the first time. Right. But since the credits don't immediately roll, we know it isn't over. The butcher apparently didn't die and shows up at Millie's house, where Millie, her mom, and sister fight him off. Millie eventually overpowers him using a weakness uh, he had that she kind of discovers while she was in his body. Um, she kicks him in the balls and <laughs> stabs him with a broken chair leg. So that's how it ends. Um, and, you know, overall a pretty fun little movie. Uh, if you go into it not really expecting horror, but more of a horror-type comedy movie, you know? Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. This so, is uh, not only, uh, like, it's a definitely like a, a horror comedy, but it's also like a, uh, what's the word, like, homage to a lot of horror, but, uh, you know, like, it doesn't take itself very seriously. But it also doesn't hesitate on being what it is. Because, as we mentioned, it's a horror comedy about a slash villain. And this movie opens with some brutal fucking kills. Yeah, it does. So, so like it, and it also funny as hell. So like it's one of those times where you know you'll get mixed genres like this before, and it'll be maybe lean more to the one or the other, or just kind of never really go all out with with both. But I think I feel like right. this one does that. It does it, and it does it very well. Yeah, it certainly straddles that line really well, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, uh, Vince Vaughn's yeah. just absolutely amazing playing. <laughs> and, and, right. uh, as is Catherine Newton. Oh yeah. You know where they're they're playing two different personalities. Oh, definitely. And especially like again, like I've always, when actors have to, you know, can't act with their words because now, granted, she does still speak when she becomes uh, Vince Vaughn's character, but there's yeah. a lot of just facial expressions and body language that that she's doing when at when once they switch over. So like you know, because he go, he's, he he talks, but he's a very you know quiet killer. Doesn't speak very often. So, right. So when he happens, her body, other than pretty much setting up more victims, she doesn't speak a lot. So it's a lot of the eyes, a lot of the face and body language. I think she did really well with that. And on the opposite end, Miss Vaughn had to act like a freaked out teenage girl, and I think he also nailed the shit out of that, as well as just a uh, a girl um, getting used to being in a man's body. Yeah, <laughs> some very very funny commentary, especially when she had to go use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad they only did it that way. It would have been a little awkward going the other direction. Oh right, right. Of course. Girl. Yeah. of course. <laughs> so yeah, they they did it the right way there. And and Vince Vaughn is you know his usual Vince Vaughn. He's funny. He's a you know he's awkwardly funny or straight funny. I guess you would call it. Right. Right. Um, Kind of like a dry sense of humor, but he he does it really well. There's an awkward scene where uh, Millie's love interest realizes and learns out who he is, and they uh, try to uh, kiss in the back seat of a small car. <laughs> right. While he is still, while Millie is still in Vince Vaughn's uh, butcher body, uh, <laughs> which was yeah. awkward and yet somehow sweet. As you yes. as, as imagine, because it was it, literally <laughs> the love interest is at that point of like, hey, I, you know, he knows it's her, and appearances don't matter. He loves her soul, <laughs> so he's gonna kiss, <laughs> he's gonna kiss Vince Vaughn in the back of a car because he loves her, and that you know, and, it, and the way it was filmed was just perfectly, like I said, perfectly awkward and yet sweet, and again, that's that balance. I think this film uh, really held, and again, coming with the kills, coming with the the references and homages, because again, like. Day one, it says Wednesday the 11th. And yep. then 
Uh, and then by the the day that they actually switch is Friday. And if you can do your if you can do basic math, that's Friday the thirteenth. So that's, that's like, right. So that was great. Uh, noted from like in the opening kill when when the butcher Vince Vaughn is just kind of ripping through these teenagers, which is also doing the classic. We don't know. Hey, these might be the main characters killing them all in the beginning of the horror movie. Yeah. Uh, we even get one for you know for your franchise. You know your franchise of choice uh, when he. Put the puts the uh, the knife through the kid's chest up against the wall. Gives a slight little head Michael Myers head tilt. Yep. Uh, so I mean, it's like that. On top of uh, there's a, I believe is what I don't remember if it's one of the main characters or not, but there is a, a football player with the last name of Strode scene in at the game when we see a Millie being the, uh, the mascot. Oh yeah, yeah. So again, like that. On top of this being set in Friday the Thirteenth, like you know, all like so many nice nods. Uh, to other horror films, which were and it was done right. No, it didn't just feel like you know parody because they were very subtly done. Some of them you might even miss if you weren't like you and me, like being big horror fans that we are. Yeah. So I mean, again, this is like you said, it's not a parody. Um, it is a straight up horror movie that's just funny right. because it's just it's funny to take two people and put them in a, other people's situations, anyways. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you can imagine the uh, chaos that ensues when she's trying to tell her friends that, no, listen, I'm really Millie. And they think that she's the butcher <laughs> and she's chasing them through the school, trying to get them to just, just to stop and listen to her. Right. Um, and ultimately, it takes her doing the mascot dance to get them to... <laughs> To realize who she is. So. Which, of course, that chase sequence, I believe it was during that chase sequence, but also this led to, again, the self-aware humor in this, too, uh, from her friends, which uh, the YouTube listeners will be seeing in the slideshow, because I found a GIF of it. But uh, as her friends are running, uh, the, or, uh, the guy friend is like, I'm gay, you're black, we are so dead. <laughs> 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 like, the, yeah, horror film rules. <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. humor like that, like that, <laughs> literally just cracked me the fuck up while I was watching. And again, it was smartly done. It wasn't like, as much as there is some joy to get out of, like, say, the scary movie films, again, this felt more like, homages like you know they weren't parodied and they was like hey we know we love horror films but we kind of got a, we want a sense of humor about this idea which originally this movie was going to be called friday the third uh freaky friday the 13th and then it finally like settled on just freaky you know they're doing yeah. homage to freaky friday with all the horror stuff so yeah overall it, like yeah. i i really enjoyed it uh some of the most satisfying deaths because like mostly everyone that died in this film were a piece of shit. So oh yeah, for sure. I definitely would like, you know, we cared enough about the characters to worry about their lives, and the one most of the ones that died, yeah. Like I'm like, okay, that that made me happy. Cause, you know, to root for the serial killer while also still rooting for the good people. You know, which you don't always get in horror films. No, and you know, just even when when Millie's killing people. Uh, when she the butcher is Millie, and so you know butcher slash Millie is killing people who think that she's Millie. It's just great because the butcher's actually getting kind of revenge for Millie on a bunch of people that treated her like crap. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, which is kind of amazing as well. So uh, right. right. Oh, and I forgot to mention it does have a cameo from with. Uh, not really a cameo, but he's in it. He's uh, the shop teacher, Cameron from Ferris Bueller. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is yeah. It? yeah. And again, you talk about satisfying us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's he, plenty of that. Because he played a prick in this. Like, it was, yes, he did. I never, I had one shop teacher and I didn't have that bad an experience. Although he was an asshole too. Maybe it's a shop teacher thing. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I had Chop once too, and he was just kind of boring, I guess, more than anything. Uh, so I'll take I guess I'll take that over. over asshole. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, overall, you know, you got a lot in this. You've got the mysticism of the the knife. You've got uh, kind of that. Uh, you know, how are they going to get out of it? They've got to overcome a lot. They, you've got the the twist of the killer being, you know, and the hero, the heroine, I guess, uh, swapping places. Um, you know, and really the only thing that jumped out to me is any sort of, like, 
plot hole problem was, uh, again, the first time they stabbed each other, it took overnight to switch bodies. Yeah. And the second time, it happened immediately <laughs> because of plot reasons. Yeah, you gotta have the plot armor. You gotta wrap it up nicely. <laughs> yeah. So, but really, that that's the only thing I can even construe as any sort of negative in this film, to be quite honest with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, a little bit, like, there, there's some tropes, although, like, you know, obviously, I think a lot of them were intentional, but, like, what you kind of mentioned, uh, Oh, there with Millie, how like you know she was uh, she was unattractive until she put on a leather jacket and tied her hair back in the exact opposite yeah. fashion of most eighties, where you got to let your hair down to become hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like yeah, like but you know that's that's every time in a lot of teen movies, like you know because the actresses like very rarely do they ever like, and I'm not I don't, I'm hesitant to even use the descriptor of uh, you know dress them down and make them unattractive, but you know you, you got to kind of get through that because you know. It's a movie. They're going to hire attractive people anyway, but they still got to play right. that outsider. So beyond that, yeah, and that's that would probably be the only thing that I felt like wasn't like an intentional trope because, like I said, they just you know they had to, they wanted to go that route as an homage, but it kind of like I'm sorry that the, the actress play Millie, she's an attractive lady even before she got hot Millie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, just again, uh, one more time, just a whole lot of fun. Yeah, it was, uh, if for, you know, whatever you're into. If you're into comedy, you'll like it. If you're into horror, you'll you'll like it. If you're into both, you'll really like it. Um, just a little bit of something there for everybody. Absolutely, I would yeah. say well acted, uh, uh, well directed, well written. Uh, and again, it doesn't Good shy score, away for, yeah. for you, uh, for you gore hounds. Even if, like, you know, you don't care about the serial guy aspect, you're like, "But how are the kills?" I assure you, the kills are fucking great in this movie. So yeah, you, yeah it's absolutely for any horror fan and dark comedy and all that. Yeah, there's a lot for everyone. I can't uh, without. Yeah. Like, so we're gonna get to our, our star rating, but if it's not obvious, you should go check this out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you've talked about the kills. What is your favorite uh, horror movement? Move the moment of the movie. Well, it is a kill, and yeah, and there's a lot. I mean, you are, you are drowning with choices in this film because all the again some of the most satisfying kills in a horror film. But it goes back to Cameron, the shop teacher, because he is such a fucking asshole, and uh, his death on the skill saw. Was this fitting, rewarding, and I, I damn near clapped because he was such a dick to Millie. <laughs> yep, she uh, she slash the butcher throws him on the table saw and, and chops him up, and it's pretty amazing. And was also my moment of the movie. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, very, very good movie. Uh, very satisfying kill. Uh, so I guess... Um, you know, other than just talking about how uh, great it is and keep repeating that, about all that's <laughs> left is to rate it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, again, I've uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's a, not a perfect film, but overall, like especially for the the rare subgenre of horror and the horror comedy, I think it's a standout. I give it four stars. Yeah, I get I give it four and a half. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed this movie. Uh, really have nothing negative to say at all about this movie. Get out, go watch it. Um, you know, you can watch it at home in your house, actually. You don't have to get out to go watch it. Um, it is on HBO Max. Uh, watch it. Tell us what you think. Yeah, yeah. Definitely love to hear Because uh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this film, and I think that's a shame. And unfortunately, you know, due to each of our personal reasons why we had to delay this review, you know, uh, hopefully now the word will get out. It's not too late. It's, it should still be on HBO at this point. If not, it'll rotate back in. So, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's... I think it's still on there. Uh, it's not a... Uh, it wasn't like a release that... Unless they delayed the release on it, but it wasn't one of their releases at the same time that, you know, oh, it's a right, theater right. type one. But, yeah, so. so it's probably still on there. But, you know, HBO does tend to, you know, they rotate out movies. But, if, like I said, they it's do. not on there now. It'll be back soon. Yeah. And, we both and I'm sure you can them. find it anywhere on the internet, if not. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for today. Thank y'all for listening, and we'll catch y'all next time.